Imagine that you are sitting down at your family dinner table. It's Thanksgiving. You have people all around you who you don't see very often. Delicious aromas fill the air as large platters are passed around the table. Laughter rattles off the walls and everywhere you look is a smiling face. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, slicing straight through all of the laughter, you hear, I hate hippos. They are the bane of my existence and I think we should make them all extinct. The room becomes quiet and all the smiling faces are now serious and uncomfortable. The source of this outrageous claim, your crazy old Uncle Jim Bob. Oh no, what do you do now? You're now sitting there remembering the last time you went to the zoo and saw that lovable blob of a creature named Bert rolling around while swimming underwater. It looked like he was having the time of his life in there. How could such a lovable and peaceful living thing attract so much negativity and hate? You firmly believe that hippos are great and adorable animals. Heck, you even had a stuffed hippo that snuggled you to sleep as a young child. It is hard for you to envision someone who does not think that hippos are the coolest. In your mind, you quickly start to assemble a swift and heated rebuke to Uncle Jim Bob's claim. But just when you are about to fire back, you think back to this one pachakacha that you heard in your creative design class about how to deal with situations just like this. Let's go back to that moment and recall how to best approach this conference confrontation to avoid a holiday disaster. I'm here to talk to you today about a troubling problem that is on the rise in our society. It is putting a strain on relationships all across the nation, and the average person is generally not prepared for how to handle this situation. The issue that I speak of is how to have a civil conversation with someone who you do not agree with. If you don't believe me that these conflicts are happening, go and look on your Facebook account, Twitter, or YouTube comments. Oh my gosh, all the YouTube comments. Seriously, I've never seen such heinous and aggressive language than in these platforms. When you find out that you have a different ideology from someone, especially if it's someone that you care about, it can be uncomfortable. But don't worry. I am here today to share with you a methodology that can help you become more prepared, reduce the tension in these conflicts, and hopefully preserve your relationships. The American Psychological Association has put forth guidelines to follow in order to create a more positive atmosphere in these potentially aggressive conversations. Let's go through their guidelines one at a time to teach you the steps of how to diffuse a situation the next time you encounter one. First, find areas where you agree. Accept that you may disagree with someone but still listen to what they have to say and what is important to them. For example, you might have different ideas about gun control, but underneath you both care about keeping kids safe. Talking about shared viewpoints will feel less intense and will create less stress in the interaction. Be open and kind. Never forget who you are having the conversation with, a friend, a family member, or a coworker. You don't want to burn the bridge by using polarizing language or making a personal attack. Try to be cognizant of your tone and word choice to reduce the likelihood of the conversation becoming aggressive. Keep calm when tensions rise. Have a plan for how you might react if things become hostile. Give yourself options ahead of time to de-escalate the situation. Take a deep breath if you find yourself getting worked up or politely change the topic of the conversation if you can't calm back down. You are the only one that can control your emotions, and being aware of them can help you to lessen the tension. Have conversation goals. Determine what you hope to achieve from the conversation. Are you wanting to change the other person's mind, or do you just want to hear what they have to say? Establishing easy and attainable goals will also help ease the tension in the conversation. Accept that you may not change the person's mind. Having these types of conversations, especially for sensitive topics, is not always going to be easy. Use the conversation as a chance to share views, not to convince anyone that your view is best. 
Disagreeing with someone that you care about is okay. Remember that you are not always going to agree with everyone. It is our personal opinions and beliefs that make us unique. It may be hard to accept that a loved one or friend may have a different viewpoint as you, but it is very important to hear them out so that you can understand where they are coming from to contribute to a healthy relationship. Know when to end the conversation. If you cannot reach a resolution, it may be time to end the discussion peacefully. Perhaps change the topic of conversation or suggest another activity. Make a point that you value maintaining the relationship with the other person before you make any transition. And lastly, be proactive. If you are worried about issues coming up, remember that these events are about bringing people together, not driving them apart. Focus on good memories and what you and your guests have in common. You can always plan activities that foster fun and laughter to create a more positive atmosphere. You look back to your Uncle Jim Bob, and thinking back to October of 2018, you now have your plan and are ready to calmly have a civilized discussion. You recognize that you may not change his mind about hippos, and that's not the point. The point is that you are sharing your viewpoint and you're listening to his. It's about having a meaningful conversation. If we all shut down at the thought of having a conversation that might develop into an argument, how can we expect our society to be able to deal with the problems of tomorrow?